So in this video, we're going to talk about writing. So something that students don't always realize is the importance of writing in college has a lot to do with the fact that our thoughts are very disorganized. They're all over the place in our head, right? Have you ever had, ever sat there and had the experience uh, or experienced the thought for a few minutes and then later on, just a few seconds later, you can have a completely contradictory thought. Right? One moment you're really interested in something, and a moment later you're completely disinterested, or you're disgusted, or you're just have no interest, or, or completely abandoning it for something else. Right? So that happens, and it happens a lot. And sometimes you're aware of it, and sometimes, well, not so much. But we can't really organize and get a sense of exactly what our core thoughts are around any particular subject. Thoughts are often just a collection of ideas, uh, a, co a, collect a collected series of ideas about something, but often with little understanding about that something. Often to understand what we think about something, we actually have to spend more time exercising. And that's exercising as in performing an exorcism, right? So we have to exercise those ideas, getting them out, uh, getting them out of us so that we can look at them and poke at them and test them. We have to get our thoughts out of our heads to figure out, is this what I really think? So in many parts of your education, the work is aimed at training you to get into the practice of getting those thoughts out on paper or on screens, right? Uh, looking at them and asking, is this really what I think? How can I make this sound more clearer, both to myself and to others? Ultimately, it's trying to make sense of what is going on in your head and then determining how we can make it more clearly stated to others and yourself. That's something important to think about with college writing. It's not just there to meet your professor's demands, but is there to help you to continue the practice of getting out your ideas and refining them. By practicing writing, you're practicing thinking, and so it'll help you too in better organizing your thoughts uh, that are in your head. Because the challenge we often face as humans is not that we have a train of thought, but that we have like 500 trains of thoughts that are intersecting, colliding, and some of them are completely off on their own paths. So writing is a way to start to put some sense of into that. It's a reiterative process. The more writing you do, the more you learn to, to figure out and really get your ideas down on paper. All right, so let's talk about the rules of writing. And when I say rules of writing, these are probably more guidelines, but these are things you should be thinking about and doing with any kind of writing that you're, you do, whether it's in college or beyond. The first is write to get it out. Um, I sometimes talk about this idea of literally just have a screen in front of you and just word vomit, right? Just, just throw up everything you can. Um, this is one of the hardest things that so many people have and hinders so much of the writing process. You sit there, you look at a screen, and you assume that what comes out of your mouth has to be perfect prose. It doesn't. Just write, just brainstorm, throw out everything you can that's in your head related to the subject. It doesn't have to make sense. It's not going to make sense. You're writing initially just to get it all out there. And, you know, sometimes what I would encourage is to take a timer and say, I'm going to just write straight for about this topic for five or 10 minutes. No interruptions. I'm just going to write. I'm going to throw out every idea I have and then see what I have. Once you start to get everything out. Once you keep dumping all of your ideas around the thing that you're writing about, the next thing you want to think about is to write to the ideas. That is, yes, you'll have an assignment, absolutely. And hopefully as you're kind of throwing out or, or writing all of the things down that you're doing in that exercise I mentioned, um, things will start to arise. Uh, you know, uh, some shape, some, some ways in which some of your thoughts are connected. And so when you go through what you've written, you want to start to think about, well, what are the ideas that I, I'm talking about here? What are the things that are connected? How can I intersect them? And as you start to intersect them, you want to write. You want to actually start building into sentences, in paragraphs, uh, in pages, how these things fit together, right? So it's really trying to make sure that they fit within the ideas that you've put them. And I would say write in terms of 
continuing this process because this is what it gets done quicker. One of the things, again, that, that students will sometimes think about is they'll want to write the paper perfectly the first time around. You, It just doesn't work that way. Maybe you work better with outlines or just kind of dumping the ideas out there. But the important thing is you really want to work to just get it out and start to figure out how it all fits together. Start to add more to it. Like, think about this as you're you're piling on. You're not trying to write this perfect script of this perfect distance, you know, of this uh, perfect length or anything like that. You are just trying to formulate and exercise those ideas in your head into the paper. And as you're doing all of this, this is great. You want to just keep writing and, and get out all your, your ideas. Maybe you start to look for some research to also pull all that in. Wonderful. When we're talking about writing, writing is only actually half of the process. So this is something you want to do when, not when it's the day before, but this is something you want to do in advance. You want to get all of this out here because the more, the equally important part of writing is editing. So why do we edit or what do we edit? We edit to refine our thoughts. So you did all of that idea dumping. You got all of those, you know, concepts out there or things that you wanted to talk about. You started to kind of think about how it relates and whatnot. But now you actually want to first look through and think about, well, do all of my thoughts make sense? Do, do they connect? Are they as polished as they could be? Can I say something more clearly? Can I, um, make it more effective? Can I give a line a bit more of a punch or a bit more of a uh, emphasis because there's something within that that I want other people to understand? So the first round of editing is really about, you know, how do I make this sound even better? How do I enhance this? How do I refine the different pieces that I have here into one coherent piece? You then also want to kind of, as you're getting those, those, you know, thoughts refined and figuring out what, what makes sense, you also want to organize them and think about how they fit in relation to one another. How do you move from paragraph to paragraph? How do you transition from sentence to sentence? Think about, you know, if the first one is really like getting all the pieces to some kind of project, right? Say you, you have a piece of Ikea furniture, right? So the first part is you've, you've got all of the pieces of furniture, right? That's editing and refining your thoughts. You've got all the, the perfect pieces you need in order to build something. Well, the next part, the edit to organize your thoughts is thinking about, okay, now how do I put all of these things together? Well, this is where you start to use the screws and this is where you start to use the nails and, and trying to get everything so that it fits perfectly. And if you've ever built a piece of Ikea furniture, you know that half the time you may mess up and you may have to take things apart and reorder the, the different pieces so that it fits the way it's supposed to, the way it looks in the picture. So think about that is that's that next step of editing is really to kind of put everything together in a in something that goes smoothly something that makes sense that a person can read from the first sentence all the way until the last and it's at this point you want to pivot and think about how you edit what you've done to align with the expectations of the assignment now the assignment in this you know the assignment or the writing project that you're doing it should be in the back of your head the whole time but it's really when you get to this stage that you want to make sure okay has everything i've written address what the expectation of the writing is whether that's a writing assignment writing guideline or you're writing for an article or you're writing a blog post or whatever you it's at this point you want to go back and say, does this all fit? And if it doesn't, how do I fix it? And then finally, you want to edit to make it look right or look nice, right? So aesthetics, whether we want it, want them to or not, are an important part of actually submitting a piece of written work. Does it actually look right? And by right, do I mean, does it follow the format that it's supposed to follow? Is, you know, is the font consistent? Is it double space? Does it have a title that gives me some indication of what this is about? All of these are different pieces that are actually more valuable or quite valuable in the writing process um, when you're going to submit it. And again, that's not just for me, but that's every time, every time you're going to submit a job application, every time you're submitting, you know, if you were to uh, try to publish something, every time you're putting in uh, an application for one, you know, for work or some other opportunity, 
that's always going to be there is does it meet the aesthetic standards? I'm not a fan of that. That bothers me for a variety of reasons, but that is part of the process. That is, you know, the finishing touches can make the can signal to the to the audience whether this is worth their time or not. So it's also an important piece to to consider. All right. My final piece of advice is just right. And what I mean by that and, you know, I can speak to this from my own experience over the years is the biggest thing, the biggest hurdle that we have to writing is we don't do it. We look at the screen, that white screen, and we feel like everything is way too overwhelming. Give yourself a five minute timer and just write anything you can for five minutes and repeat. And you'll find you'll start generating material. And then you'll want to start connecting the different pieces of material. But really at the core is don't let yourself, don't let perfect be the enemy of good. You're never going to start writing and have it come become perfect, amazing prose. What you're wanting to do is to get the ideas out there, to get the thoughts out there, and then you can start refining them. But you can't refine them unless they actually get there on paper. So hopefully this is useful. Hopefully this gives you some insight as to what to think about or how to approach the writing process. I know it's hard. Um, I struggle it with myself in, in a variety of ways. Uh, so I, I get it. But this is the best advice that I've certainly used throughout my life that I know so many other other people would, um, would, end, would recommend and encourage people to do. All right. Thank you so much.